we come to you first of all just giving you thanks and giving you praise. And Father, I personally come to you confessing that I have sinned and come short of your glory some way and somehow. But now I need your preaching power. I need your strength. I need you to wash me from the inside out, Father. I pray that you would just take this vessel and use me like only you can. Father, we give you all the praise. And I pray, Father, that this word would be so simple that even a child may understand it. And, Father, I pray if it may be the will of you that someone would give their life to you on today. But if not, Father, we still give you the praise. And we still give you the glory. For it's in the mighty name of Jesus we do pray and we all say, Amen. Amen. Giving all praises to God, honor to our pastor. Again, pastor, thank you so much for another opportunity to preach the uncompromising gospel. Um, just want to say thank God because... Our pastor preached so well, and he gave me so much confirmation on where the Lord will have me to preach. And even from the testimony from Brother Anthony, where we should preach. And that's what I want to do today is preach about evangelism. Amen. Amen. And I want to draw your attention to Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter 28, verse 16 through 20. And if the Lord say the same, I promise you, I don't want to hold you too long. Matthew chapter 28, verse 16 through 20. And I was just listening to our pastor as you turn, and I was just listening to him how he was telling y'all we ought to go out and, and, you know, give the plan of salvation and tell others about the gospel. And we are all called to preach. And I was just like, thank you, God, for the confirmation. Thank you, God. Then when the brother testified how he's doing what he's doing out there, thank you. Thank you, God, for all the confirmation. Amen. And the word of God says, and this is Jesus, uh, in Matthew chapter 28, verse 16, it says, Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, to the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him. But some doubted. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go ye therefore, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of ages. Amen. Amen. And that's all I want to talk to you from the subject. The Savior reveals the Great Commission. The Savior reveals the Great Commission. The Savior reveals the Great Commission. If we start on today to open our spiritual eyes, we will see there is a great need for evangelism. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 9, verse 37, the harvest is truly plentiful, but the labors are few. And I truly believe that the reason why we don't do more evangelizing is because we have lost our concern for the lost. Yes, now that we are saved, Many don't want to go out and share the gospel. Some of us, we are content with our surroundings. In other words, we're fine in our big homes without telling somebody about Jesus. We're fine in our fancy cars not getting out of our cars telling somebody about Jesus. And even if you don't have a big home or a fancy car, we're still content with not telling somebody about Jesus Christ. But the word of God taught us, and Paul said it best. He says, but how then can they call on the one that they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And he asked, and how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And can I tell you, y'all, when it comes to lost people, the lost folks are not concerned that they're lost. Uh, they're just like the little kid in Disneyland. Uh, they are enjoying Mickey Mouse. They're enjoying Donald Duck. They're enjoying Minnie Mouse. They're watching the parade and not even following their parents. 
Uh, he's too busy enjoying the Ferris wheel and the roller coaster. Yes, just like this little boy who was lost, having a marvelous time. Well, that's just how it is with those that are lost today. They don't even know that they're lost because they're having a marvelous time. Yes, in the midst of the crowd, in the midst of the entertainment, uh, the little boy, as I re recall on the story, he got separated from his parents. And he still didn't know he was lost because he was too much having fun on the rides. He was too much having fun singing, it's a small world after all. He was too busy having a good time watching the parade and everybody screaming and shouting. He never paid attention about uh, where his father and his mother had went. And that's how it is with Satan, y'all. He distract those that are lost. He distract them with the worldly things. He distract them with the ungodly things. Yes, he gives them a Disneyland experience. Yes, he offered them false hope, false joy, false love, false everything. But he offer also the entertainment that's beyond their imagination. Yes, they are lost, and they don't even know that they're lost. But can I tell you, our God, who is the chief commissioner, he has sent an APB out for those that are lost. He has sent out an ATL for those that are lost. For those that ain't never been arrested, that means attempted to uh, locate everyone who is lost. And that's what, a that's what ATL stands for. We have received the ATL as believers to, to locate the or attempt to locate those who are lost. Yes, he has sent his son who is the commissioner to let those who are soldiers in God's army to help put out an ATL. Even the saints, which is the chief commissioner's children, he has told them it's an ATL out on for those who are lost. See, everyone is a part of the body of Christ. We ought to be on the lookout for those who are lost. Uh, we are the ambassadors of Christ, those who speak on the behalf of Christianity. We ought to look out for those who are lost so they can be found. You see, it's just like that little boy again in Disney World who was lost. See, the father told the security, and the security found the lost boy and told the lost boy about his father who was attempt to look for him. And so the security brought him back to the father. And can I tell somebody on today, that's what God wants us to do for the lost. See, we are the security, and therefore we need to go find those that are lost and tell them about the father who's looking for his lost child. And once we lead the, the, uh, the child back to the father, we as security need to go find others that are lost and tell them about the father who's looking for the lost child. Yes, many of us can recall when we were lost that somebody had to tell us about we are lost and led us in contact with the father. Now y'all, that task Jesus left us with, we are considered disciples. It's a task that he left us with, and I know it's uncomfortable to tell a stranger about Jesus. I know it's uncomfortable sometimes to tell somebody about the Lord, uh, but that's the, that's the task that the Lord has left us with. That's the task he told us to do, that we ought to go out and evangelize. We are the ones God has chosen to deliver his message. Y'all, I'm reminded of what it said in, uh, in John chapter 15 and 1. Jesus says, I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. And guess what? If we believe in Jesus Christ, we are the branches, and we are to bear much fruit. Not just any kind of fruit, but we ought to bear much fruit. And that leads me up to my topic on today. Found in Matthew chapter 28, verse 16 through 20. Jesus said in verses 18 through 20, All authority has been given unto me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, baptizing them in the name of the Son, baptizing them in the name of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of time. And now our Savior has done something for us that we couldn't do for ourselves. And it is commanded by the commissioner to go out and tell somebody about Jesus. 
it's not a, he's not asking us. He's not advising us. He's not saying, I'm going to show you some grace if you don't do it. But he says, we got to go out and tell somebody about Jesus. It is a command given by God. This is a command. This is not a choice that we have to choose or make a decision on. But it is a command to tell a dying world about Jesus. Ah, uh, yes, tell them about who is Christ. And he wants to reveal to the lost by using us to get out the message. And that I am the savior of the world. That's what he wants them to know. And I am the answer for those who want salvation. And therefore, we need to see how the savior reveals the great commission. And on today, with the help of the Holy Spirit, I won't be before you long. I'm going to hit you with these three points, and I'm going to sit down. We need to understand how to share the gospel. There's three things we need to remember. First of all, we need to remember Jesus has all power. Amen. I say it again. Jesus has all power. Amen. Look at the scripture in verse 18. He says, all power is given unto me in heaven and on earth. Amen. You see, the gospel has a earthly and a heavenly dimension or a dispensation, in other words. And that's not even the word I'm looking for. It's a dimension. That's what I want to say, a dimension. And y'all, we have to be, uh, we have been commanded to share the good news with earthly people who are facing earthly problems. See, some have been lost for so long that they are not concerned about dying and going to hell. They fail to realize that after this life, it is another life. They fail to realize that after this life without Jesus Christ, they will bust hell wide open. See, when this life is over, but they have to remember, we have to remember, rather, that we are the branches, and we need to bear much fruit. And we have to tell a dying world about Jesus Christ. Yes, we have to tell them that there are many problems here on earth, but you know what? You don't have to go through them alone. See, you don't have to tell them that once you find Jesus, everything's going to get great because we know that's not true. We know trials and tribulations will still go with us. But when you plant the seed in someone's life, just tell them you don't have to do this by yourself. You can just trust in Jesus Christ and let him work it out in your life. And I promise you, he'll get you through what you're going through. Yes, the sun is going to shine, but then there's going to be rain sometime. But I'm not telling you to tell them all that, but just tell them about Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah, tell them that they just need to come to Jesus. And I promise you, he will give you rest. He'll give you rest for your mind. He'll give you rest physically. And he'll give you rest for your soul. And y'all, he's the only one that has the power to give you rest. He's the only one that has the power to cleanse your soul. But all you have to do is just come unto him. And we as believers, y'all, we need to plant the seed of salvation. And only Jesus has the power to make it grow. See, we don't have to tell them about our story and what we went through, but you tell them about how good God is by saving their soul. Plant the seed and move back and watch God move. God does the, uh, we do the planting, but don't, only God can give the increase. One can do the watering, but only God can give the increase. Yes, share the good news with the earthly, uh, with earthly people because it has a heavenly consequence. And again, I tell you, only Jesus can save our souls. Only Jesus has the power to save our souls. All we need to do again is just plant the seed, step back, and watch God move. Remember, we are to tell the truth and tell nothing but the whole truth. Not your story. But tell his story because it's all about Jesus and the sacrifice he made for us. So again, just remember, Jesus Christ has all power. But let me leave you with another one. Just remember that Jesus Christ is for all people. He has all power, but then it's for all people. Notice in verse 19, he says, go ye therefore and teach all nations, not just in South Dallas. Not in Oak Cliff, not in DeSoto, but he said you got to go sometime to Plano. You got to go somewhere to Frisco. You got to go somewhere in other areas. But wherever you go, take Jesus with you. Uh, you know, it's sad that the church is so segregated. I can recall a long time ago I was, in, uh, I was inviting an individual to, to the church. 
And he asked me, what, what, what church you go to? I said, well, I go to Third Avenue Missionary Baptist Church. He said, no, no, no. What kind of church you go to? Is it a black church? Is it a white church? Is it a mixed church? And what kind of church is it? And I told him, and I thought to myself, I said, man, uh, what difference does it make? I'm trying to give you Jesus. <laughs> and that's what we need to do. We just need to give them Jesus. And yes, I'm here to tell somebody today, when it comes to witnessing, again, it is a task. And can you imagine what the disciples went through? Now, y'all picture this. It was just only a few of them, and they had to do a lot of crossing over land. Y'all, they didn't have telephones. They couldn't call nobody on the telephone and give them the plan of salvation. Uh, they didn't have cars where they can just drive as far as they want to and give somebody the plan of salvation. They didn't have planes to get to other destinations in other countries to tell somebody about Jesus Christ. But yet and still, they were faithful, and they spread the good news everywhere. And y'all, by me saying this, y'all, I have to say for myself, Lord, I have fallen short to your glory. I have sinned and come short to your glory. Because I know that I should be out telling somebody about Jesus. You commanded me to go ye therefore and tell somebody about Jesus. I got to let God know that I have fallen short to his glory. Because I done been to some places where I should have talked about Jesus. I've been to some places where I know some folks was lost. And I should have said something about the Lord. It was some places that I've been that I had no business being, and it was some places that I should have been where I know I needed to be, and yet still, I've been quiet. But God, I'm telling you right now to forgive me, but then give me boldness in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Because the Savior is for all people. It don't matter if you're black. He's for Jesus. Uh, 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 it's for all people. It don't matter if you're white. He's for all people. It doesn't matter if you're big or strong. He's for all people. Whether you're weak or stubborn, he's for all people. See, there's no person too sinful to be saved. There's no person too backwards to be saved. And there's no person too bad to be saved. Because all have sinned. Not y'all, but all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And all of us, we need to tell somebody that the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus, our Lord. And yes, he is for all people. So again, we need to remember Christ Jesus has all power. Christ Jesus is for all people. And the last one I want to lead you, leave you with is Christ Jesus is always present. He's for all people. All power, but the good news for us as saints, he's always present. Y'all saw it in there, these scriptures, he says, Lo, I am with you, what? Always, not sometime, not when troubles get bad, I'm gone. But he's there always until the end of time. Amen. So when we go out and tell others about Christ, it's good to know that you're not alone. God has given us a comforter by the name of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And all we need to do is be prayed up so we'll know when to speak up. Yeah. We need to be prayed up when we know we need to speak up. Yes, yeah, speak about the saving power of Christ Jesus and tell them about the good news of our Lord and Savior. And it's good to know that the Lord is with us. And it's good to know that the Lord is watching us. And it's good to know that the Lord is working in us. And it's good to know that the Lord is walking with us. Yes, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Because Christ said, I never leave you nor forsake you. And isn't it good to know that Christ is pleading our case to the heavenly father who sits on the throne. So I'm here to tell you, don't get discouraged when you knock on somebody's door and try to tell them about Jesus and they slam the door in your face. I know you want to say some bad things, but don't get discouraged when they want to cuss you out and call you out your name. I know that it gets discouraging sometimes, but we got to hang on in there. We have to remember that this world is not our home. We got to remember that God is getting us ready for that great day. 
Yes, Satan will try to block our blessings, but the world will even try to distract you. But keep your mind stayed on Jesus. Put on the whole armor of God, especially when you go out witnessing about Jesus. Let them know that God loves them. Let them know that Jesus saves. Over 2,000 years ago, our Savior died a substitutionary death for a sinner like you and me. Yes, he died late one Friday evening, but early one Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hands. Yes, all power for all people, and he's always present. What a mighty God we serve. God bless you, and may he keep you is my prayer.